Hey, good morning. This is my good friend and colleague, Paul Kirschbaum. I'm Leslie Wooten. It's 1033. Let's get into it. Today's topic, reopening after the COVID-19, the coronavirus pandemic of 2020. First off, we need to say uh, right off the bat that this issue must be taken seriously. If you're someone who takes business and public health seriously, you've got to play your part to everyone uh, and help everyone return and move past this worldwide crisis. Uh, please follow your local ordinance and federal guidelines. Our goal is here to discuss what any operational team must do to follow the guidelines and get their business back on track because local guidelines may vary and because updates are made to those guidelines often. Paul and I must speak generally about the issues and not to any specific guidelines. So just check what's going on locally and we're gonna be talking generally across the board for what we need to do. So. Uh, Paul, first off, yes or no, are you looking forward to getting restaurants open again? Yes, I'm looking forward to restaurants <laughs> opening again. That's the easy one. Yeah. I'm going stir crazy. How's it been going? Like, why, why do you want to see restaurants open and not just as a uh, restaurant professional, just in general? As a customer. I, just, yeah. I, I enjoy going out. I really enjoy going to restaurants. I really enjoy talking to bartenders. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 90% 90, 90 of the time I sit at the bar. Um, two reasons. These are usually it's better service, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's just, it's convenience for me. Um, if I'm with my family, we'll, we'll, we'll sit down. You know, I'm not going to put a four-year-old at the bar. Well, I probably would, but not to drink. Um, not to drink so, no. Maybe five-year-old. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Maybe five. Five, five and a half. Five, um, five so, <laughs> we're kidding, guys. Um no, I'm really looking forward to it. I enjoy going out. I think I enjoy the experience. Like we talked about um, when we talked about tipping, I really enjoy the experience of going to a restaurant. Um, the money pack part of it. Yeah, it could be cheaper for me to cook at home, but um, I really like to see what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out, getting into the restaurants. I'm looking forward to seeing how different restaurants are going to change and what the new normal will be how close will i think I, obviously it's going to be pretty close to the old normal but i'm, I'm just curious to see what we're going to see moving forward like when we first open up there's going to be a lot of um requirements and guidelines but as those get looser and looser and we move past everything i'm really curious to see what precautions we take in the restaurant industry and where that's going to go and that's that's hard to predict but right now all i can predict is that people are going to be following the guidelines and trying to move forward. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that as well. Um, yeah. so, so what challenges do you see for restaurants varying sizes on what they need to do for uh, social distancing? Well, for, for, for social distancing, it's, it's, it's going to it's difficult. It depends on the size of your operation. You know, I think one of the, one of the, you know, I'm going to step back a little bit. I know I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of answer this question in two parts. First of all, the first part is, you know, you talked about what's going to look like, you know, this could change industry. Yeah. It's going to change it completely. A year ago, I was preaching to a wall saying, you know, portability. You got to make sure you have retail, enhanced to go, um, you know, you know, delivery. These things were, to me, were very important because that's the way the industry was going anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and we're headed that way, and a lot of people were just kind of hold back. Um, you know, some things were built for, like pizza delivery, Chinese um, in general. Uh, but, you know, I think people kind of were stepped back or didn't want to get involved there. Like, I, you know, the costs are not right, blah, 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 blah. You know, right. so whatever the reason was. do it. We don't have that experience, and now they've been yeah, forced well, into that experience. Well, yeah. The, yeah, exactly. So I think that's where the restaurant industry is going to go. I mean, people were already, I mean, I don't remember – the exact number, but it's a large percentage where people would consume your your product off premise. Um, that was already happening. Now it's going to be blown up to, you know, huge proportions. The ones that are succeeding during this pandemic are the ones that did that well, that delivered, that had great takeout. Uh, people that adapted quickly, turning their parking lot into a drive through. You know, mm -hmm. those things were 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 you know already built into their systems. You know what I mean? Um, they had the POS system that could handle that. The people that weren't ready for that, um, you know, are going to are struggled obviously, or something just shut down. Um, so going forward, I think the three, my I live in threes. Everything I do is in threes, sure. um, except for kids. <laughs> two done, yeah. Two done. I'm my dog, my dog counts, right? 
there like a go. fur baby, whatever the heck that means. Um, so number one would be the, you know, your portability. That's what we call it, just an override, whatever to go, retail, grab and go, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next one is social media, uh, your online presence, not necessarily mm -hmm. just social media, but your online presence. Um, the people that were good, the restaurants that were good at online presence, that had a deep group, a group of following, a lot of people they can communicate with, handled this, can handle this much better. They can communicate mm -hmm. to their customers, hey, this is what's going on. Communication expectations, key. setting expectations as they come in, because that's, yes. I think that's going to be part of the social distancing is you walk into a restaurant and even if you're hyper conscious about social distancing and the importance of the, the being health conscious, you walk in, I want to help, but I don't know where to go. I don't know what you want me to do. So it not only instructing your staff, but getting either that staff to be able to tell your customers or like you said, social, di or, uh, social media, being able to tell your customers directly what to expect when they walked in the building for the social distancing. So I, I like yeah. that social media. Yeah. So that was two. You yeah. got one more. Yeah. So yeah. And, and the last one is, is basically uh, building your plan. Okay. Okay. So you, you have, you know, the, the portability, you have your, um, you know, your online presence. And then I would basically, what we call strategic planning. And this is very broad. So, but you need to sure. build a plan for COVID. So right now it's COVID. Next year it might be. Reopening or, the, or changing uh, or your second business or whatever it we, might be. Pork is going through the roof. Maybe it's, it's pork. That's going to be your yearly plan. So you build a strategic plan. It can be year, month, whatever it is. But you need to be a plan for this COVID. You're reopening. Most restaurants, I'm, I'm going to speak very generally here out here, guys, so mm -hmm. please don't destroy me on this. Most restaurants destroy cannot them. survive, destroy me, cannot survive off 50% occupancy. No, period. no way. No way. That's I, I, all, oh, my goodness, you said 50% occupancy, and I, I, I think that's going to be such a challenge uh, for any restaurant because most restaurants, like you just said, will not survive on that. And what I hope we see our, our strong operators do in this time is use this as an opportunity because it's the only one you got. You don't have a choice. Use this as an opportunity to train your staff and, and train your guests on what the new norms are going to be in your restaurant so that when you can start increasing your capacity and get back up into profitability, everybody's everybody knows what's going to happen because with the social distancing, I think one of the most difficult things that restaurants are going to have to do for this is manage the number of people that are coming in where before this happened, you want butts and seats, butts and seats. Let's get as many people in. And when we're to capacity, we'll figure something out. And now you can't get to capacity. You have to stop people at the door. You have to manage it. And before, when you got to 50% capacity, or let's say that you were staffed up for more than 50%, you started making cuts to labor. But now, once you get to 50% capacity, you have to keep your labor on or smart managers on so that you maintain 50% instead of allowing people to push it forward. So yeah. when you make cuts at the end of the night because you're only at 50% capacity, that's because you don't expect more people coming in. But now when you're at 50% capacity, you, you have to overstaff to maintain it. And I think that's going to be a challenge because now not only you have 50% capacity of income, you have to overstaff just to maintain it. Because if you don't, more people are going to walk in and you got no control over it. Yeah, and that's why I come back to strategic planning. The third mm -hmm. pillar is because you need to plan for this you can't mm -hmm. just wing it no. it's just i don't wing it, you need to make a plan and it, yeah the plan it, it doesn't matter if you hit the plan at least you're thinking about it. that's the whole point of right. planning is is getting the thought in your head going all right let me let me sit down and think let's do some numbers you know like we talk about this all the time there's only two ways to build sales it's butts in the seat and check average well you can't get butts in the seat more than a certain amount during this so what's the only other option check average well okay now i know mm -hmm. my check average is going to drop because if you change your menu, it might drop. So you need to make sure your menu reflects what you want your check average to be. And that being said, you need to know your break even point. And mm -hmm. usually I tell people it's weekly. Um, now you're going to have to have a daily break even point. 
um, I was talking with uh, a professional um, in the business that's um, the territory manager, and he's doing it hourly. Um, that to me is it's smart. I mean, it's mm -hmm. with what's going on. You know, Not hourly just I gotta hit eight before. or ten thousand dollars a day. I got to hit yeah. seven, eight hundred dollars an hour. That's exactly now. And then I have people that go, well, I, they do it hourly, and they're and they they do it. They're really let's think about it. Like between ten, if they open up at ten, they're like mm -hmm. ten to twelve. I want to average this between 12 and one. I want to average this between two and four. I want to average this between. Six. So he actually breaks it into that. So he breaks it into not out. He breaks it into like segments. So he mm -hmm. does, I think right. four segments. He does pre lunch, lunch, post lunch slash pre dinner, dinner, and then post dinner. Second um, breakfast, and, third breakfast, you know, he's got the hobbit. Whatever, whatever your hours are, you, you break, he broke it into four. I think he did it quarterly and, and fine. He didn't, he didn't overcomplicate it. Um, and it, it's, it's imperative. I can't, I just cannot believe restaurateurs don't do that. I was like, don't you want to know? I mean, our POS systems are built for this. It mm -hmm. will tell you how many customers you come in per hour, what your sales are. Um, and that will help you with a staffing, but it mm -hmm. will help you build your plan to be successful at running at 50% capacity uh, so because we, it's we, the new norm. Mm -hmm. We've, we've talked before and you emphasize it a lot and I completely agree that in order to increase sales, you got to get butts and seats, you got to increase uh, check average. And this is going exactly against butts and seats because now you have to limit butts and seats. So we're going to focus on increased check average. I was uh, talking to a colleague, a, a real good friend of mine, who I really think needs to get on one of these shows, especially when we start talking about EBITDA or, or P&Ls. Um, and he's reopening right now and working through a lot of this and one thing that he's finding is that his tip average is through the roof that, oh, yeah. you know the, the people coming out of this and i'm thrilled about it because i know i would be are feeling generous and i think that's incredible when we've got so many people on unemployment so many people out of a job wanting their job back but they're willing to go out and help stimulate the economy through the people now going to the business is good and we're talking about the difficulties of that but helping the the servers and the bartenders through tipping yeah. but my point here is people are feeling generous and i think that that would be a good smart opportunity not to gouge because that's just immoral but i think it'd be a good opportunity because you can't increase butts and seats, you can increase check average to raise our prices where you need to, to help accommodate our lack of uh, a completely full business. What do you think? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I think raising prices is imperative. Um, not Commodities are going through the roof, guys, and they're not going to go down. For that, for our, that reason, too. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's number one. And, and the good thing is it's actually out there on on the media and so people kind of get it you know things they know it they don't it's not gouging, they when they go to gouging I, somebody's going to take advantage of it and shame on them of course of course and, and, but that's not who we're talking about we're talking about that. in general in general raise your prices um people well, you know, are willing this to is the it. this is this is one of the things i said when this first started i go everything you hate about your restaurant change it now you have the yeah. one you got the do-over. This is a mulligan. This is this is a. I've been playing a lot of golf lately, which I'm terrible <laughs> at, but I still play. Uh, a mulligan on your restaurant. All the stuff you hated on your menu, take it off. Customer yeah. that loves it, because the biggest thing is, oh, why'd you take off my favorite thing? We had to because of this, and they're not gonna say anything oh. after that. Um, no, especially menu if it's size. true. Like, be honest. Like, cut your menu back. Like, <laughs> wh why not stick to the things that you're good at making, that you like making, yeah. that are that are low cost, uh, high. Uh, high volume or not high volume, but what am I trying to say? Um, uh, low cost, high profit. Um, your you stars. Got, yeah. Your stars. Yeah, why you, you, not? Get, keep your stars, reevaluate your, uh, your, your uh, puzzles. Um, mm -hmm. Keep your plow horses. Those are your ones you're going and get rid of your dogs. You know, get, get rid of now's them. Not the, like don't replace not the them. Get rid of them. <laughs> now's not the time to try to impress people with this new menu. Now's the time that people want to get out of their houses, get out of the cave that they've been living in, and go have a hamburger somewhere. I want yes. French fries that I can't make in my own kitchen. I, yeah. before all this happened, and I, I think you know this about me, is I'm terrified of to-go food. Um, 
my girlfriend loves sushi. I love sushi, but I won't do to go sushi because that 10 minutes from the door to door, I, I just can't handle. And I've made a lot of exceptions to that in my life because with this, I want that cheeseburger. And so I'm willing to wait 40 minutes for a cheeseburger delivered and they, they made it. And then, then some Grubhub or DoorDash or somebody Uber Eats picked it up, brought it to me. And I don't know how many stops I had on the way. And I'm willing to eat that now. My God, you don't need a fancy menu to get me in your restaurant. Just have a no. restaurant that's open. Practice this is your reset. Mm -hmm. This is your reset. You know, like, you, like you were saying in the beginning, this is your reset to, to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what is going to, you, you asked this, this kind of where we went on a tangent, but you asked in the beginning, what is this basically <laughs> going to look like in the next, you know, six months, five months, whatever it looks in the future. I don't know, but I can tell you it's going to be different. And mm -hmm. the operators are going to get, have the opportunity to drive what it's going to look like. We, they have the opportunity to do this. You know, the, the creative ones are the ones that are going to shine. Um, the mm -hmm. ones that have been doing the same way they've always been doing, they might, they'll be fine, you know, but you know, people say, well, the weakest, weakest links will be gone. Like, no, you're going to see a lot of educated, very smart operators go, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, you see it like you know, there's a very uh, famous guy out in Portland, Oregon. that just like, you shut them all down. He had like different concepts. It's like, it's just, it, it wasn't worth it anymore. And I, and I don't know if that's the passion. I don't know if it was the numbers. I don't know what it was. And I don't know the guy, but a lot of places are, you know, that are really well run. They're just like, it's just the, the margins. And I don't want to, I don't want to reset like that. that they're successful doing it this way and they're done. And that's okay. And I'm okay with that. That's not going to my feelings. But, you know, one thing that we will change is the sanitation part of it. That okay. part. Okay, how so? Because customers' expectations. Sure. They were already pretty high. Now when it comes to sanitation, they're going to be through the roof. We always had that. We've said this. My mom says it. You know, you walk into a restaurant, you go to the bathroom, and you can see how how clean their kitchen probably is, um, is how clean their bathroom is. Um, totally. Agree. So here's here's where I, I I disagree. You think sanitation is it, it needs to improve? I think our sanitation guidelines where they were were actually in line for this. We were expected oh, yeah. to wash wash fruit and vegetables when they come in the back door. We we teach and preach for our servers and our bartenders to wash their hands after they wash dishes, wash their hands after they drop dirty dishes off. We're wash hands. Here's how you wash hands. You you sing the happy birthday song 2.5 times, whatever it's going to be. We have contests about hand washing, hand washing, and that's all existed before. We've got hair up and back. All these rules have existed before. And to be honest, I don't think our, our, our health and sanitation rules are going to improve. I think our willingness to manage and follow those same rules as before is now going to be present because, like you said, now the guests expect it and are looking for it. And I think we're, we're finally going to see for some of those of, of us that were like, why aren't we washing our hands all the time? Why don't we wash bar fruit? By the way, I'll never put lemons or limes in a beer in a restaurant ever. ever Cause ever, ever. Oh, the grossest food. Especially the, the ones that are the, my, the worst ones are when you go to like the, the quick service places that had the bowl of lemons next to the, like the soda mm. machine. Guarantee that yeah. was not washed when it came in the back door, but this is, no. It, it, and you know what? I also don't want lemon or lime in my beer, but that's yet another topic. That's, different, that's a different story. Yeah, but as far as health and sanitation, now's the time to emphasize, re-emphasize, and hit home the standards that I would argue were already in place, just not mm, as strong as they will be now. Or do you think? Or do you think they'll get stronger? No, a hundred percent agree with you that our guidelines that we've been HACCP guidelines, most everybody lives by HACCP pretty mm -hmm. much um sort of safe that that you know sure. i agree with you they were already in place perception is what oh. i'm going after Fair. perception yeah. to the to then the customer agree. <laughs> is going to be big the difference and this is the other one you're going to get like people that use certain things in the bathroom i there's an argument over air blowers there's oh. argument over paper towels there's argument over everything that you can go in there you're going to get more complaints, more verbal feedback mm -hmm. from customers. Um, well, how your how your bathroom looks? Yeah. They used to so just keep you it go, themselves. You go, hand, you go hand dryers or you go towels. Somebody's going to complain about one or the other. And I can yeah. look back I, on I, my career and my life. And at one point, I was like, "Oh, pro hand, hair, uh, air, 
sorry, air dryers. And then sometimes yes. I've been pro paper towels and it's like, oh my goodness, which side am I on right now? And it's just crazy. And either way, no matter what, I'm always on pro wash hands, wash your hands. Yeah. Hmm. You know, Get the foot thing on the door so you don't have that's to. That's it. That, that, I don't understand why that's on every damn restaurant. Sorry for my life. Oh, <laughs> that wanna, drives me. I want to put, put it on my front door. I want to put it on my own bathroom. <laughs> And the first time I saw it, I think it was like in a Whole Foods or something like that. I went to the bathroom. I'm like, what the hell is this thing? This is years ago. And I'm like, I just, and I just, I was like, oh, Amazing. genius. Yeah. Like why? Like it is a, I, I could go to Home Depot or Lowe's and mm-hmm. spend maybe five, 10 bucks and have one and put one in. And I, it's funny things. I've, I haven't put them in my rush. My, when I open restaurants, mm-hmm. I didn't put them in, but I, I don't know why. Like I, they're just the most easiest thing in the world to do. And I guess, I and then when it comes Sorry, I, gu- I guarantee you there's an operator out there somewhere like, well, corporate won't let me do it. I'm like, yeah, they will. Like, yeah, having worked yeah, in, in corporate for so long after being an operator yeah. for so long, it's like, yeah, they will. Are, are they really going to stop you? Like, that's the – I sometimes don't understand <laughs> not, not why. Not even that. Like, if they, if you can't like, – okay, let's say, let's say just for – I was a sanitation – Special director for for mm-hmm. specialists sure. for a company. And I go to I go to uh, I go to different uh, franchisees and check up their sanitation, whatever. Right. And I walk mm-hmm. in the bathroom, and in our Rex it says it doesn't have the foot thing. Hell, it says it mm-hmm. doesn't. You know, and they had one. Uh, uh, what, what am I gonna do? Oh no, you gotta take that down. No, <laughs> I'm gonna actually true. probably give you extra points. <laughs> it's it's not part of our brand coding. I'm like, well, marketing's not in charge of this foot thing, so calm down. No, I think that sometimes that's when you get into, you know, people get way too on one side or the other. Just you know, let's let's it, let's use common sense, but obviously yeah, that's stop, not common. Stop dividing your uh, corporate headquarters into departments when we're all on the same page, and that's that's really where it takes project managers and everybody to make sure everybody's on the same page. So. Um, which should be yet another topic that we bring into this. We're not going to run yeah. out. Um, so let's get back to the, the, the COVID-19 um, crisis. Um, who holds the biggest responsibility to get this right? The business, the management, the employees, or the guests? Management. Management. Why? How? I go back and forth. I say the business. I'm, I'm being business management, maybe – can I just say leadership? Okay, cool. So let's go leadership and, and answer that because I'm also going to argue guest here in a moment. Yeah, I think leaderships are the, is the biggest one to get it right. Um, the reason why I think that is it's, it's a responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we it's not the norm, but it's what we are. It's 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 the the hand we're dealt, right? So there's no point of pouting about it, making this political or blaming somebody else or whatever it is what it is though i hate that saying mm-hmm. you it's the leaderships to take over and make the the their unit their their restaurant their 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 business better and safer not only their internal customer their employees but their mm-hmm. external customer for their employees are there going to be some conflicts um some 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 bad days yeah it's be a lot of it but if sure, you, just like every day before this, but now we have a specific monster that's going to walk in the door and we need to plan for it on what to do. If you get an unruly guest or a guest who, I don't, I'm so glad that you said it's, it's not political. This is a health crisis. It's not a matter of, do you believe it? It's a matter of, do you understand it? And it, it's not a political situation. It's a, it's a health crisis and we need to get through this. And I, I'm, confident that we can do that together. I'm confident that we can do that with social distancing. I'm confident that we can do that with the right management and leadership if they have the knowledge to move it forward. And that knowledge has to be given to your employees. That confidence has to be there on here's what we do when we find a situation that we've never seen before, but we can anticipate what those uh, situations might be. And then for the guest walking in, whether I'm a guest, whether I'm in leadership, whether I'm an employee, whoever I am, I need to be aware that if there's another guest who's walking in that building and they think that this is some uh, political thing that's out to get them and they decide that they want to take it out on a business, 
as guests, as people, as, as civilians in this same community, we need to make sure that we're supporting that business and speaking out against anybody who's trying to ruin a business because of their political views or thinking those political views, because you're not going to hurt the guest in that building. You're not going to hurt that employee. That business is going to get fined. The yeah. police in the areas aren't enforcing these health code violations with masks or no mask. The business is required to do it. And when the health inspector comes around and sees that there's violations, who's in trouble? Local business. And my goodness, as, as citizens and as guests for uh, different restaurants, we've got to make sure that we're sending the message that stop hurting our business by taking what you think is some political stance on something, wear your mask, do what's right, and let's all move forward. Yeah, well, I mean, let's just make it simple, right? We all see this sign, no shoes, no shirt, no service. Yep. Nobody got up in arms and said, oh, you're, you're stopping my, my uh, human rights. I can't wear, I don't want to wear shoes. This is I not can't wear shoes. Best. I'm like, stay out of my restaurant. Yeah. I had the right to refuse service. Period. Yeah. Now, that, you're going to get some backlash no matter what. You can't make everybody happy. But you know yeah. what? You, that, do you really want that person in your restaurant, in your establishment? I hope not. My God. You might. I mean, that's, that's not for me to judge. But, sure. you know, no shoot, no shoes, no service. That, that's, that, the sad thing is there's a reason for that. <laughs> Right. And this well, is not the this beach. Is, it's the same reasons for why we're talking about masks and social distancing. It's for the health and sanitation of the restaurant and for other people that are that are coming people's. in. Um, people that's are what it self-centered. Is. It's not about you. Yeah. People are self-centered. Let's just be honest. They're shell. They're selfish. I'm almost a shellfish. Um, they and that and that to me, and it's all it is. It's not your 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 human right or your 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 you know. They throw out the Constitution. I'm like. That's not what we're talking about. This is for the greater good of the restaurant and the people right. that are in it and my employees. Business. Remember when we talked about, you know, we talked about uh, uh, our last one was customer service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's certain things I would not put up with. I was, customers always right until they insult my staff. Yeah. Same thing. You're fine. But if you put my jeopardy of my staff into, in, into jeopardy, if I'm going to lose my mind. That, that is, there is a non-negotiable there. Get out. Period. I love that online, perspective of you're threatening my, my staff, staff right now. You're also threatening my business by not doing this. What if I, as the business owner, don't want to wear a mask either? That's not your choice. Follow the, the health guidelines of your local, state, federal yeah. ordinance, whatever it may be, and do what's right, whether it's social distancing, whether it's masks, whether it's 25 people or fewer, whether it's 50% capacity, whether it's 15%, whatever it is, follow it. Because if you don't, you're going to lose your license and then we're not going to be able to move forward. We've got to do yeah. this together. Yeah, I so, know. It, 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 yeah, I agree. 100% agree. We're on the same so, page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> finally, um, what is your advice for managers, for leadership? What is my advice for leadership and management? Uh, first of all, you got to know the inside of outs of your local, your local ordinances, mm -hmm. period. Uh, number two, uh, and then the, the number two, the second pillar for me, you know, 11 threes, uh, mm -hmm. communication. And that mm -hmm. is um, online presence, uh, your, your internal customer, um, your external customer, um, the, communi the communication needs to be streamlined, needs to be t uh, informative, quick, mm -hmm. <laughs> it needs to be very quick. You don't want to go too long on this, but you know, if it's, if it's social media, if it's, if it's posting stuff, um, you, your staff needs to be, you know, know it as well as you do. And, and that's your job as management. Uh, so yeah, communication, local guidelines, uh, and then the biggest one for me is the third pillar, which I've been preaching all day is, uh, you know, have a plan, strategic yeah. planning, have a plan, uh, know your break even point, uh, know your staffing levels, know, you know, uh, be, help out your community. I mean, whatever it is that would be you and, and, and put yourself in the customer shoes and your employee shoes, you know, we're not even touching on the fact of the, the employee who right now is making more money on an appointment than they are probably in the restaurant. And some of the, uh, that's, you know, that's, that's for another whole, six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So 
And that's on yeah, average. Pressure. I know you're you're speaking in generalities. Like some people aren't even getting those checks, whatever it might be. We're not trying to, but yeah, like how no, are no, we just, support this move forward? Yeah. I've talked to operators. Yeah, so uh, you know when, when I give operators, let's say communication is key. Make sure you know the guidelines and make sure you have a plan. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to consider that same question for employees. Like, what what advice would I have for the employees? Is everything you just said to the managers and leadership? that as an employee, if you're not getting that from your manager, if your leadership's not providing that, not only research it for yourself, but ask them, go to them and demand that information. Speak out, be like, hey, we need to know what to do here. We need to know what to do in this situation. We need to know how this is gonna work or this is gonna work. Because it's not business as usual, although we're trying to get there, our employees, have a responsibility to their own jobs, to the community, to your own livelihood of making sure leadership is pushing that uh, information. And if you've got to pull it, pull it, go get that information. Um, so the third part of that, and I'll send it back to you is what advice do you have for guests? Patience. <laughs> guests yes. need patience. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that that is the number one is you got to be patient because you're going to be waiting. And a lot of times you'll be waiting in your car or somewhere else. I mean, things are different. You, you can't expect um, your expectations of in and out of a place is going to be completely different. Yeah. In general, most understand that. But I think patience is the biggest thing that customers, and this includes me. Like, I went to the hardware store, not a big one. It was a smaller one, um, smaller, smaller, uh, smaller local one. And, and it, I got I got upset like I really did like I got up early I drove a long way to get, get there, uh -huh. and they had and you're, I'm gonna get lambasted for this you're probably gonna even yell at me, they had a senior time, and they uh -huh. do it twice yep. a week and they do it from eight to nine or something like that. Yep. Well, I got there at eight and I walked in and they just basically the the way they communicated to me that's what part of it ticked me off. It didn't tick me off that there was an eight to nine for seniors. Come on, I'd be a, sure. I'd be the, not a nice person if I thought that. So, but I asked is like, cause I look before I go anywhere, I look online, especially during mm -hmm. these times and looked at their hours, see them that they're open. Mm -hmm. And I went down, so is there any special requests for the COVID where they missed the mark because they didn't communicate it to me I, or to- 100% with you, yeah. They didn't communicate that there was a senior time. I asked this person, is this on your website? I don't look at my website. Okay, that's fine. Um, and that's all you have out. right now is a website because people can't go out. How are you? How do you not have an online presence, especially now? Um, and that's so it. That. And that, but my patience was was out the door because I was it wasn't communicated to me. Like you need to communicate your hours. You need to communicate. Mm -hmm. there's, there's there's something that I can't. Cause people are driving a long ways if you're not in, and dealing with a lot to get out. I mean, just getting out of the house. I have a four year old. I mean, getting a mask on a four year old. You know how hard that is. It's like getting a drunk out the door. It's, it's not, it is a difficult situation. I know how hard that is. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I thought she was going to threaten to tell everybody and call the police on me. So, um, so <laughs> she, she's not really going to, please don't call the cops. Yeah. Um, so I just think the communication aspect of it, um, customers need to be patient. Um, I don't have patience. I have zero patience. Um, but I will, I do have patience when I'm walking to a restaurant knowing, hey, there's a half an hour wait. And you know, normally I leave and go somewhere else because I just don't wait in line. But now sure. we're going to have to, you know, we go well, to the supermarket. I'd we argue all day long that Paul 2020 is a lot more patient than the Paul 2007 that I knew so well. Oh, yeah. So I you do did. have patience. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so to, to summarize real quick, uh, for leadership, know your talking points, know your plan, know what your local and state ordinances are. And... Yeah communicate that to not only your employees but your guests before they come in the door employees research on your own why not that is available on the cdc website on local uh, government websites look it up and honestly demand it from your managers and leadership that they're communicating that as well and talk amongst yourselves and be prepared for guests look it up and hold those restaurants accountable and to be honest if they're not preaching if they're not sending out that information i wouldn't be 
so comfortable walking into that restaurant. If they're not clearly communicating to you, I don't know that they're clearly communicating to their employees. And it's like Paul said about the uh, restroom. If this restroom is this dirty, I can't imagine what the kitchen is. If they can't communicate to their guests, I can't imagine the lack of communication that they have behind those walls and what sanitation they are or aren't doing. Um, all great talking points. Uh, really enjoyed the perspectives. I feel it's important to be open to the struggles that the businesses are going to have for the safety, security, health of all those working really hard to reopen and all those who are looking forward to getting back into a routine. I wish everybody the best. Um, I know I speak for Paul uh, when I say we'd love to hear your perspectives on moving forward after the COVID-19 crisis. Um, how is your business affected? How are you affected? And what are you doing for the best interest of your guests? Paul, any closing remarks? No, I'd love to hear what's going on and um, any, any, any feedback, uh, uh, any, any ideas, any strategies. I'd love to hear mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, and just a big thank you to all the, you know, the hardworking uh, managers, servers out there. Um, I will be patient for you guys, I promise. <laughs> yeah, I uh, believe it. And, and, and I hope that you get great tips. And I've seen some, I've seen some closed caches and I've seen some good numbers, you know, even uh, up two or 3% in tips. It's, it's a big, it's a big amount of money. And to all the customers out there, take care of your servers and bartenders. Um, they're working their butt off, guys. Um, you know, they, you don't, you don't, if you've never worked in the business, you don't understand how hard these guys work um, and, and, and ladies. So please take care of them um, and be patient, please. Mm -hmm. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. Have a good one.